Hi, it's Thomas George and welcome to this beginner's guide for music theory for the electronic music producer. I'm a composer and a producer and I've taught thousands of students all around the world music theory. So this course is for anyone that's brand new to music theory or they want to know a bit more music theory to help them improve their songs. So in this course we're going to cover loads of different topics. We're going to start off with octaves, working out a major scale, perfect fourths, perfect fifths, chords, working out a minor scale inversions and also writing melodies. This is just a beginner's guide though. If you'd like to continue learning with me after this course, then be sure to check out my complete music theory for electronic music producers course. If you check out the link in the description or the bonus section, you can get this course for only £10 or $10 rather than £195 or $195, which is at full price. And this is over eight and a half hours long and covers a lot more subjects in a lot more detail. So let's get started and I'll see you in the first lecture. Hello, in this lecture, we're going to be looking at the piano roll layouts. So it's actually really simple. Most digital audio workstations will have this piano roll layout like this. And all it really is, is our keyboard put on its side. And that's basically what a piano roll layout is. So you might open up your digital audio workstation. Maybe it's FL Studio, maybe it's Ableton Live, maybe it's Logic Pro and you have this kind of weird looking sidewards piano. All they've really done is chopped off the keys at a certain point. They're only like this because it's easier to play with your fingers and just stuck it on its side and that's about it. The example I'm going to show in this beginner's course is going to be in Ableton Live, but it's pretty much the same in all the other DAWs. They tend to use this piano roll layout just because it gives you a time value as well as a note value. So going across it's time and going up it's notes. The higher you go, the higher the notes, the lower you go, the lower the notes. It's really that simple. So if we go into Ableton Live now, you can see the piano, the piano roll layout right here. So if we just play in a note, you can hear that C2 and if we go up, C3, it's higher. And we know this is C because if we look at the two black notes, just to the left of this is C. So no matter where you are on the piano, there would be two black notes and then three black notes. Remember, just the left of the two black notes is a C. And they're called different numbers, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8. And this is just how high middle C or C actually is. Middle C is C4. And so if someone said play in middle C, you would play this note here. Because looking at this, you can see that this is C4. And that's basically the piano, the piano roll layout. It's really simple. It's just keyboard stuck on the side. It's just a way that digital audio workstations like to use because it allows us to have time as well as the notes. So if you're brand new to music theory or digital audio workstation, you might see this piano roll layout and be like, what is going on here? This looks really complex. Just zoom in and just have a look at the notes and soon you'll realize that they just link up to a piano. You can play in some of the notes. And the skills I'm going to teach you in this beginner's guide will allow you to start making your own music without actually knowing how to play a piano. Playing a piano will help or playing a keyboard will help if you know how chords work, if you know how scales work, this will help. Traditional music notation like sheet music, it's not really going to help in this day and age. That's more an old fashioned way of recording music. The stuff we're going to go through in this beginner's guide it's just really about working out scales, working out chords, just to head you in the right direction for writing your own music and knowing what music theory is. I do believe a lot of music producers in this day and age, they can make some pretty decent music, but when it comes to music theory, they do struggle a bit. Your ear is the most important thing, but a little bit of music theory can really help you a lot, especially just giving you ideas and new things to work with. For example, if you don't know what a scale is or a major scale is, you can work it out by ear, 
But now and again, if you know what the scale is, it'll give you a lot more to work with. Same with minor scales, same with modal scales, which I cover in my Complete Music Theory course. If you want to check out my Complete Music Theory course, make sure you have a look at the link in the description. We can get a massive offer for this course. But this beginner's course, we're just really going to be look, looking at the fundamentals and the basics of music and how music works. So thank you for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one. Hello, in this lecture we're going to be looking at octaves. We covered this previously in a lecture before, but an octave is basically the same note but higher or lower. And we number these one, two, three, four, five, etc. Even minus, which is even lower than one. And basically the higher the note number, the higher the note. So if we have C8, it's obviously going to be a lot higher than C1. And remember, if you get two blocks like this, just to the left of this is C, and middle C is C4. So let's just have a look on Ableton Live here. And here is C4. If we go up to C5, you should notice that this note isn't right, but this one is. So you might know the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And that's how you can know the difference between octaves. If some where, so some, so, you can hear that note's wrong, and some where. That's the easiest way to work out an octave, in my opinion. It's just think of the first two notes of somewhere over the rainbow. If we go down, C, C. You should know that these notes kind of line up. If you want to make any harmonies, octaves is the easiest way of doing this. Octaves, it just work. So if you ever get stuck, just use an octave. It's not necessarily the richest sounding harmony or the most interesting sounding harmony, but it works. If you want to put a string part in and you don't know what to put, use an octave. It will work. Let's have a look at the guitar and I'll explain what an octave actually is. Just if you want to know a more technical reason, the octave is the note, but kind of chopped in half. It's the wave, but chopped in half. You look at the guitar, and you go up to the 12th fret, you'll know if you play the guitar, that the 12th fret is an octave. The reason it's an octave is the string, but exactly in half. So if you want to be even more kind of technical, a bit nerdy, you can just look at the sound waves here. So we can see this one is a higher octave because there's twice as many waves as this one, which is a lower octave. And if we had the octave even lower, the waves would go even less, or half the amount of this. And that's basically what an octave is, and that's why it works in our music. It's the same wave, but half the length, and it just fits in perfectly with our ear. And remember the interval somewhere over the rainbow. An interval is just the distance between two notes. So if someone says interval of an octave, it's just one octave, and then another octave. That's all an interval really is. Somewhere over the rainbow is a great way to remember this. So thank you for watching this lecture. All about octaves, really simple, really straightforward, and just a great way to actually create harmonies. And it's something just really interesting that you should know. If someone says, play an octave bass line, you should know that the bass line, the bass part, will be playing octaves. I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but I think it's great just to hammer home some of these fundamental parts of music theory. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, now we're going to have a look at working out a major scale. This is really simple once you know this one pattern that I'm going to teach you, which will allow you to work out any major scale in any key. So we have actually 12 different keys, one for every single note. So if we go up here, we have C, C sharp, and D flat. They're actually the same notes, we just call them different names for different keys. And then D, D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp or G flat. This little symbol here, this hashtag is a sharp, this little B is a flat, G, G sharp, A flat, A, A sharp, B flat, B, and then back to C, and the keys repeat. So we can have a major scale for each one of these notes. We've got this little pattern here, which will allow you to work out any major scale in any key. And this is T, T, S, T, 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 S. So just try and remember this, T, T, S, T, 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 S. And the T stands for tone, the S stands for semitone. 
So a tone is quite simply just two notes, including the black notes, and a semitone is just one note. That's the easiest way to think of it. So if we start on C, and we go up a tone, so it's just two, one, two, we go to D, then we go up another tone, one, two, which is E, then we go up a semitone here to F, then we go up a tone, one, two, to G, then we go up another tone, one, two, to A, remember a tone is two, two notes, basically, and then another one, one, two, to B, and then the third, which is a semitone, the last one, B to C. So this is all the white notes, which is a C major scale. So let's just go into Ableton Live here. If you're using, say, Fruity Loops or Logic Pro, or FL Studio, I should say, yeah, it doesn't really matter which one. It's the same principle. Music theory works in all digital audio workstations. So if you don't use Ableton Live, don't worry, it doesn't really matter. So remember, T, T, S, T, 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 S. So T, so it's tone, one, two, one, two, so tone, tone, semitone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So if we just draw this out, it'll actually make a C major scale. You can hear there? There we go, that wasn't the right note. The good thing is, when you learn all these scales, you learn what a major scale is, a minor scale, you can just hear when the notes are wrong, because you've heard it so many times, you're so used to these patterns, it's just really, really easy to actually work out. I'm just going to slow this down a little bit, and let's just uh, play this. notice that that just works. Another thing you can do if you want to be really cheeky is just select all these. You can just write in a major scale with C, just all the white notes, and then just drag this up. So we can just drag this up to say D, this note here, and then if we play this, that's D major. So all we've done is got the pattern of a major scale and moved it up to another note. It's kind of the cheeky shortcut way, but it works. So I'm just going to choose another note. Let's choose A, and then I'm going to write in an A major scale. So starting on A here, we start with A. And remember tone, so it's one, two, tone. So one, two, up to this black note here, the C sharp. And then semitone to this D, and then tone tone up to this black note here, semitone, that's not right, there we go, and two. So once, once in a while you all get these wrong, like there, I hit that G instead of a G sharp, and I just knew instantly it was wrong just by playing these notes really, you know, knowing what a major scale is, knowing what a minor scale is. You should be able to recognise when the notes are right and the notes are wrong. So this is an A major scale. We use the pattern T, T, S, T, 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 S, or tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Just got to remember that, really. That's an A major. Like I said, you could just yeah, drag it all up to say this B here, and this is a B major. That's the easiest way of working out a major scale. So what we can do is either use this pattern TTS, TTTS, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, or just find one major scale and then drag it up or down. The pattern will keep there in the piano roll. You can move it up and down. Just remember when you're writing music, I try and stick in one scale to start with, and when you get a bit more advanced, you can look at other techniques like modulation, moving into different keys, and more unusual keys, which I do actually cover in my complete music theory course. So thank you for watching this lecture, all about working out a major scale. Okay, in this lecture, we're going to be looking at perfect fourths and perfect fifths. 
Previously, we looked at octaves, which is basically the same note, but higher or lower. And now we're going to look at perfect fourths and perfect fifths. If we, in a major scale or a minor scale, the octave is going to be the same. If we're in C major, it will be a C. If we're in C minor, it will be a C. And the same with perfect fourths and perfect fifths. If we're in C minor, it will be an F, for example. Just count up four notes of the scale. One, two, three, four. Or C minor. We'll look at minor scales later on. One, two, three, four. It's an F. So it's perfect because it works in major and minor. It's the same with the perfect fifth. This works in major and minor. It's also called perfect because it just works. It just sounds nice. It sounds good. So if you're ever stuck, octaves, fourths, perfect fourths, perfect fifths. That's how you can make stuff sounding good. So remember, TTS, TTTS, you're probably sick of this already. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. We have to hammer that in. If you only remember one thing from this beginner's guide, just remember tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And that will allow you to work out any major scale. Okay, so let's have a look at Ableton Live now. And I'm just going to draw in a scale. Let's just draw in C major. It's basically just the white note. It's really easy. So it's just tone, tone. Semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So these are our notes here. And the fourth, we just count up four. One, two, three, four is this F. And five, one, two, three, four, five is a G. So we could have this note here. Which here that sounds fine. Go up to a G, which is the fifth. To me, that sounds a bit richer, just works a bit better. But either of them, maybe not together, but perfect fourth, perfect fifth, work in a major and a minor scale, which we'll look at soon enough. So, I hope you found this lecture useful. It's really just about perfect fourths and perfect fifths. Now you know why it's called a perfect fourth because it really just works as an interval, which are the notes, difference between the notes. And it works in a major scale and a minor scale. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, now we're going to be looking at chords. I'm sure you've heard this term a lot. It basically just means a few notes played together. That's all a chord really is. Several notes played together. The most common ones are major chords, and minor chords. And there's a really subtle difference between the two of them make a big difference in sound. The easiest way to put it, which is really oversimplified, is major is happy, minor is sad. Okay, I've got this little pattern here to work out the difference between a major and a minor chord. And it also allows us to write our own major and minor chords. And all, all it is is major is 5 and 4, and minor is 4 and 5. So 5 and 4. So if we count up 5, this will find our third. If we count up 4 after this, this will find our fifth. If you're a bit confused, I will play a few examples as well. And minor is 4 and 5. So let's just look at C here. So if we count up 5, this means 5 semitones, or 5 of these notes, including the black ones. We have one, two, three, four, five. So this includes the first note. One, two, three, four, five. We get to this note E. Then if we count up four, one, two, three, four, we get to G. So remember that major is five and four. So let's just go into Ableton, Ableton Live now. So remember, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. If I play this, that's a major chord which should sound happy. And then we have a minor chord. Let's just get rid of these. Which is 4 and 5. So let's go back into Ableton Live. Remember 4 and 5 for major chord. So 1, 2, 3, 4. You can hear instantly that's a different note. It doesn't really fit compared to before. But this is a minor chord. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That note there. Should hear instantly. 
that sounds a bit sad, really. Another easy way to change a minor chord to a major chord or a major chord to a minor chord is just move the third, which is this note here. So if we move it up one semitone, it's a major chord. If we move it down one semitone, it's a minor chord. This isn't with C, this is actually with any scale or any key. So let's start on D and let's go and make a major chord. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Remember, major is five and four. You should hear that that sounds major or happy. And then we can even move this down, this third down, one semitone to make a minor. Or we can just count up four and five. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That's minor. We do have a few other ones as well. We have something called augmented, which is five and five, and diminished, which is four and four. We don't really use these as much, but I think it's good to know as well. So remember, augmented is five and five, and diminished is four and four. So let's go back to C, just because C is really easy, especially if you're new to music theory, because it's just the white notes. So augmented, one, two, three, four, five. So the first half is major. It's basically just the same as a major, but a little bit more on the end. One, two, three, four, five. This note here, just out of key, you can tell instantly because it is a black note. So it's not really in C major. You can hear that, that sounds a little weird. I quite like it, but it's not happy. It's not really sad, it's something else and diminished, which was four and four. So it's kind of minor. The second half is a bit smaller. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Sounds a bit more mysterious to me. So that is a augmented and diminished chord as well. And that's basically how you can work them out. Remember, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone to work out notes in this in the major scale. And then if you want to go through and play some chords or write some chords in, you can use major chords, which are five, four, to work them out. Minor, which is four and five. And then we also have these augmented and diminished. That's basically how we can work out chords. So thank you for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, now we're going to have a look at working out a minor scale. Minor scales are actually quite easy to work out. So a couple of ways we can do this. One is memorize this pattern, T, S, T, T, S, T, T. Or another one is to actually just count up from a major scale. So if we have all the notes from a major scale, and we just count up six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and start from here, and use these notes in a major scale, this will be the natural minor scale. Because basically every major scale has something called a natural minor scale. And all it is, really, the natural minor scale, is six notes of the scale, and start from there. So let's try this method first, and then we'll have a look at the pattern. So in Ableton Live now, and let's just draw out C. Remember, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Let's add another octave, so tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So here is a two octave scale of C major. So all we have to do to write in a minor scale is just start from the sixth note. So this is this A here. That's all we have to do to work out what our minor scale is. So then just stop it at A, and this is a minor scale. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. You'll notice that this is actually all of the white notes. So I'm just going to draw these in here so you can hear what a minor scale actually sounds like. Like I said, it's just the major scale starting on the sixth note. That's the easiest way to actually know this. That's it. So if we're in any key, it doesn't have to be C major. Let's just try a different one. Let's try 
E major. So we have tone. Let's go down an octave actually. A couple of octaves. So tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Let's just play this back. That is an E major scale. So all we have to do is start on the sixth note. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the C sharp. So all we have to do is copy this pattern. So we have a C sharp, and a D sharp, then an E. Then we have an F sharp, so let's type in the F sharp. Then we have a G sharp, so let's type in the G sharp. Then we have an A. Let's type in an A. Then, let's go back here, we have a B and a C sharp. So let's type in a B and a C sharp. Remember, it started on C sharp, so all we really have to do now is just delete this from C sharp and then just drag all of this back. And that is a minor scale. The other way was to use this pattern T S T T S T T. So if we use this T S T T S T T, we can draw it out. So let's just zoom in. So we have tone, then semitone, and then we have a tone, then we have a tone, semitone tone and then tone. So this is a C minor scale. This D sharp is technically an E flat but I wouldn't really worry too much. The different scales do have either flats or sharps. Ableton prefers sharps and always writes in sharps but it doesn't really matter. So let's just go back to the pattern. We had it was T S T T S T T T S T T S T T so T S T T S T T. So tone, semitone, tone, tone, semitone, tone, tone. That's another way we can work it out. I personally prefer just counting up six notes and then I know kind of the major scale and the natural minor. Easy ones to kind of swap between. But this is another way we can do this also. That's basically how we work our minor scale. So remember, major is T T S T T T S, minor is T S T T S T T. Or you can just work out the major scale, count up six notes or back three notes. One, two, three, goes to A from C. One, two, three, four, five, six, gets to A. So either up six or start in the C and down three. Either way, you do get to the natural minor, it's called. We do have different types of minors as well, harmonic minor and melodic minor. I do cover these in my complete music theory course. Like I said previously, if you do want a really great coupon for this course, it gives you think, over 90% off, make sure you check out a link in the description. But this is really just the basics of a minor scale. And I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, and now we're going to have a look at a bit more detail of chords. So going back to our, our major scale, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone to work it out. Each of these notes actually has a different chord. So we have major chords and minor chords for each of these notes. And there's even one diminished chord in there. What this basically means is the notes that fit in this chord actually fit in the scale as well. So we can't just have all major scales if you remember, C major is all the white notes, and let's say D, the second one. If we have this as a major, one, two, three, four, five, there'd be this F sharp, which isn't in key. So it has to be this F. So the D is actually a minor chord, but the first one, the C, is a major chord. So I like to use these triangles and these dashes and a circle. It's kind of an old school jazz way of doing it. Basically, a triangle means major, and negative or dash means minor and a circle means diminished. 
So this means major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So another pattern for you to remember. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So you need to really try and internalize that so you know what notes the scale are off from tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And then you know from major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major, what chords go with these notes. So I just practiced at home if I was you, just going tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, and major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. After a while, it will just be like major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. <laughs> It'll be really fast because you just know instantly. And after a while, you all get unconscious competence. So you just know whatever key you're in, you know. The fourth one is major, and you can play that note and play that chord straight away, but this will take a while. So let's just have a look in Ableton Live. So remember this pattern, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. Let's just build in a few of these chords. So let's start with C. So C is major. So remember major is five and four. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Second is minor. So remember it's major, minor. So let's, the second note is a D. So tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Just going to draw all the notes of the major scale in first, just so we know. So it's tone, tone. Then we have a semitone, tone, tone, tone. And back to the root, semitone. So the second one is a minor. So let's just have a look at this again. It's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. You're probably sick of me saying this, but this is another really important thing to memorize if you're new to music theory this pattern here, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. Write it down on your wall, write it down on the piece of paper just to remember this. You don't have to use the triangles and the dashes. I like, I like to use them. It's just a good way to visualize it. That's how I learn a lot of time, just for visualization. But let's just write in all these chords. So we have the second one. It's this D. Remember, it's a minor. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, so it's a minor is four and five. Major is five and four. So one, two, three, four. So that note there. And then one, two, three, four, five. A lot of the time, you all just mess this up on the piano roll editor. It can be quite small and fiddly. But if you train your ear, you just know instantly that that note is wrong. I knew that this note here wasn't right. So this note here is a minor or minor third. Okay, the third one is a minor as well. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. The fourth is a major. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Fifth is a major. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Six is a minor. So let's just go back. Remember it was major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. So one, two, three, four, five. The fifth is a major, the sixth is a minor. So let's have a look back in Ableton Live. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. You also notice all of these notes here fit in the scale. The scale's the bottom note and there's no notes out of scale. This is what you call a diatonic chord progression. Diatonic basically means the notes fit in the scale. The chord progression is just a load of chords. <laughs> really? So let's do one. This B is the weird one. Remember, this is diminished, which is four and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then finally C again, which is a major. Okay, and now let's just play through this. So these are all the notes and all the chords that we can use if we want to stick in C major. Of course, we can use other scales and move to other keys, which is called modulation. But at the moment, if you're brand new to music theory or you're new to writing music, I would just use one scale or one key. You've got all these different chords you can use. You don't necessarily have to just use like these chords in this order. You can move them around. So say you could start on the C, and then you can, let's put in uh, the F here. 
So let's just move these over. Let's put in this F. Let's put in the A minor, which is the 6. And then let's put in the G. So we could use this. And let's just get rid of the rest of these. Let's just copy this over. If you're using a Mac, all you have to do is hold down Option or Alt. So this could be a little chord progression. Okay, I'm just going to actually drag these out. Let's put this over here. And just stretch these out, make a bit more space for them. Move this like so. The last one is just there. Just kind of uh, changing it up, it up a bit. Okay, and delete these. And then I'm going to increase the tempo. Let's try 110. Then just play it with some drums. And we can even change this even more. So let's just uh, add some stabs in, so change the rhythm around, just using the notes, really, from our chord progression. That's all it is. So we could use that for instance, really simple, really easy. And then we could even uh, make another clip if you're in Ableton Live. I like to colour these differently and just change it around again. And just remember the chords that we're using and the notes. After a while you can do what I'm doing, you just know the notes that fit, you know what chords work. But go through and work out what they are straight away if you're brand new to Music Theory or Digital Audio Workstations. This one's just going to be a little bit different really. Just going to change it up a bit. And I'm going to play the first one. And now the second one. And that's basically how we can write chords. Just stick to the pattern that we should that we went through before, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished major, and that gives us all the chords that we can use in the scale, in the key, and go through, move them around, change them about, go through different chord progressions. Chord progressions, like I said, is basically just a bunch of chords put together next to each other, that we can create something interesting, new, and musical. So thank you for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, now we're going to have a look at inversions. So inversions are basically the notes of the chord put in different orders. So if we look at this one here, if we move the C down, it just looks a bit neater, the notes are closer to each other, and it just creates a smoother sound. But for now, I'm just going to actually just draw in some of these bass notes. And the easiest way to do this is just to stick the bottom note of the root, so the first note of the chord, down an octave. So the first one is C, then we have an F, then we have this A, then this G, then this F, then this G. It's good practice to do this, then you can quickly make a bass line and move this bass note information to another instrument. Then you have E, and F, and then finish on G. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the bass notes there. It's quite nice to have the root note in the bass as a starting point. And then I'm just going to move some of these around just to make them look a bit smoother and kind of sound a bit more locked in and sound a bit nicer really. So let's move the C down, let's move this E down, 
and let's move this C down. Let's just see it uses the same note. Then let's move this D down, this B. Um, let's move it down, yeah. This C I'm going to move down, the A I'm going to keep there, the D. I'm going quite fast, but this is the pace you'll be able to work out once you kind of internalise a lot of this music theory. Like I said, inversions, basically just moving the notes around of the chord, just so they sound a bit smoother. Now let's hear this back. This is the first one without the inversions or the bass notes. Obviously it's a slight different pattern that we looked at a lecture previously, but it's pretty much the same. And now this is a new one. Sounds a lot richer, a lot more kind of fuller sounding than this. That sounds a bit kind of too light-hearted and too playful. This to me sounds more serious. You don't always have to have inversions. You can have the chords in what we call root position, which is the, the root, the third and the fifth. So, But it's nice now and again just to have the inversion, just to kind of make it sound richer, fuller, smooth, and linking together, not so jumpy. And that's basically what inversions are. The next lecture, we're going to look at writing melodies. So I hope you found this beginner's guide useful so far. We've just got one more main lecture left. Also, if you want to take your learning further with me, remember to check out the link in the description or the bonus section so you can actually get a discount code for my complete music theory course. This is over eight hours long, goes into a lot more detail, all about music theory, stuff like modes, like different types of scales, pentatonic scales, a lot more in detail instructions and examples. And I go through some of my songs and how I actually wrote them. So you can kind of get a lot more information and knowledge all about music theory. So let's have a look at writing melodies now. So previously we created this chord progression. And now we're going to write a melody. The easiest way to write a melody is to just use some of the notes in the chord. There's a few different ways. One way is you can actually just sing the melody in your head and work it out, but you will need to be quite trained for this. You will need to be writing music for a while so you can hear these in your head. Another way is to just simply play some of the notes in the scale and just kind of mess around with it until it fits. You don't have to use a MIDI keyboard. You don't have to use a piano or anything, you can just type it all in. So remember this first chord was a C major. So we can actually just draw in a note from C. The good ones to start with are the root, the third and the fifth. Of course you can experiment with other chords and also um, other notes in the chord. Like passing notes is basically a note that isn't in the chord or something. You can use blue notes so it's slightly out of key. But for now, for this example, let's just start with something really simple. We'll start with this G, and I'm going to go down to an F, and then got this F major here, and go up to an A, and then actually stay on this note. Let's actually write the right one in, A. So you can do this just through music, through, you don't even have to hear it, and it will work. It might not be the best melody, what you need to do is really just train your ear to realise what you think will sound good. Okay, the next one is an A minor, so go up to a C, and then I'm going to go down to a G, and the last note is a G, and then I'm just going to hold this G, we'll go up to a B, and then we go to an F, go up to a C, next note is a G, G major, next chord, up to a D, next chord is an E minor, it's going to hold this G across, this D across, it's actually a seventh of the E minor, the seventh note of the chord. Then we have an F major, so I'm going to go down to a C, and the last one is a G, finish on this D. So this is the melody here, let's see if this works. Not too sure the first note, let's try a higher one. Let's try a C. And the second one, let's 
，我是 J。There's a bit too much going on, so I could probably just delete a few of these notes. And that can really be our melody. What we can do as well is just, just copy this over to another instrument. So I'm just going to open another MIDI instrument here. And let's just go on instruments. And I'm going to use analog. If you're using a different digital audio workstation, just choose kind of any instrument for now. Then we can just kind of paste this in. And then another way we can do is either copy and paste it in or just delete all the ones below. And this can be our melody. Obviously, that's a really bad sounding synth. Um, you, you will need to go in and learn a bit of synthesis to change some of these sounds. But we can just use a few of the presets for now. Let's just choose synth lead. And let's try this one. Try this one called Fat. Okay, and then what we can do is kind of uh, go through and make another melody here. Doesn't have to be the same. What I like to do in Ableton Live anyway is make loads of different songs, loads of different clips, and then go through and pick my favourite ones. So if you do have any knowledge of keyboard skills, you can play this in on your MIDI controller, or you can just type it in. So remember the first one was a C, so start with a root, the third and the fifth. So I'm going to start with an E, and then we go to an F, so I'm going to go down to a C. Like so. And then um, I've got this A minor. Might just have some bit more rhythmic for this one. Then we have this G, so we go up to a, a D. Then we have this F. Let's stay in the D, not necessarily a note you might want, but it might sound a bit interesting. Stay in the D. Then E minor, we go up to an E, which is the root. And then hold this for the F. So this is kind of a weird. Seventh from playing here, and then it finishes on a G. So we go back up to a G. Okay. And now let's just uh, copy this over. And now I'm just going to go through, delete all the notes that aren't the melody notes, basically not the high ones. So we can get rid of them. It's just a really, really easy way of writing melodies. And then go through here, just delete all the top notes, which was the melody. Okay, and now we should have two different melody lines. So we've got this first one here, and the second one, which is kind of different. So let's just hear this. This is the first one. Now the second one. You can do that. What I like to do is literally write like 20, 30, loads and loads and loads and loads of different melodies, and then go through and find my favorite ones, and use different chord progressions, and write different melodies that fit those chord progressions. I like to actually color these differently, and then just go through and write tons of stuff, and then arrange and create a song from that. So I really hope you found this beginner's guide useful. Kind of gone through the core fundamentals of music theory for electronic producers. Like I said, if you do want to continue learning with me, remember 
you can check out my complete electronic theory course. So it's my complete music theory for electronic producers course. So thank you again for watching. I hope you found this useful. Remember to shoot me in the comments or messages if you do have any questions. And thank you again for watching. Thank you again for watching this beginner's guide to music theory for electronic producers. If you do want to continue learning with me, then make sure you check out the link in the description or in the bonus section where you can actually get my complete music theory course for only £10 or $10 depending on what country you're in. Full price, this is £195, so it's 95% off, which I think is a really good deal personally. And if you're new to music theory or you want to improve your music theory, I do think this course can really help you out, especially if you're an electronic music producer. We go into a lot more detail, so it's stuff like chords and inversions, seventh chords, chord extension, suspension chords, the circle of fifths, modulation, harmonic minor, melodic minors, so arpeggios, writing styles, writing techniques, song analysis. So I actually go through and analyse some of my own songs and show you how I write my music. And also how to create a song, so I can show you different examples and different techniques so you can improve and try different methods for your own songwriting process. Then we have a look at modes, which are different types of scales and some other scales as well. This is over eight hours long. So if you do want to continue learning with me, make sure you check out the link in the description or the bonus section. And feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you again for watching this beginner's guide and I'll see you soon.